on this Pentecost Sunday. We are back here at St. Stephen's in Harrington, Delaware. We'll begin. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Tigria and Pamelia, in Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and Coptos. Christians and Arab, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with the new wine. And Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judah and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks be to God. I'm sorry, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, 
song today is Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved but by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot be saved. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death, and to, to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is Give our help and our shield. shield. Indeed, our hearts rejoice in him. For in his, in his holy, holy name, name we put our, our trust. trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as, as we, we put, put our trust in you. In you. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who, who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gift of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. For if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. camera here. Yesterday I was reading something that 
our suffragan bishop, Gail Harris, wrote. And she quoted this. This is from Barbara Harris, Bishop Barbara Harris, who said one time, we are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. And it certainly seems that way, doesn't it? Here we are, an Easter people living in a Good Friday world. This world which has turned upside down for so many of us. A world of pandemic. A world of social and racial discord and strife. All this even as we commend our essential workers. The doctors and the nurses and the EMTs out there in the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic. Grocery workers who go in each and every day standing behind plexiglass shields so that we can get our groceries as safe as possible. There are still those who have to go to work, people who pick up our trash, our essential workers. People working in restaurants, even though it's still takeout, are essential. There are certain things we just have to do in order to continue on. Those are the points of light that we see in the world as it is today. Those are the points of light upon which we are called to look upon and see. It has become a topsy. I told Heather as we walked in today, I said, this is not a week for me to go preaching. This has been a really tough week, socially especially, with the riots now. And we sit back and we wonder, what is going on? What has brought this about? I read yesterday where over 100 years ago, there was a Sunday call, they call it Red Sunday. It was a Sunday when white Americans attacked black Americans across the country, killing them, burning them out of their homes, all because of jobs that the white Americans felt these black Americans were taken away from them. You can look it up, read about it. It's in the history books. I remember back in 1968, that long, hot, summer. It was a year my parents and I and my sister all went out to Michigan to visit my cousins who lived right outside of Detroit. And my cousin and I standing outside in his front yard watching the glow of the fires from Detroit in the sky. I remember the times in Boston when they tried to integrate the schools enforcing a busing policy, causing strife, anger in the streets. And now we see it again, the experiences of these black Americans, African Americans, who have been hurt and, yes, killed. Rihanna Taylor in Kentucky, Albert Aubrey in Georgia, now George Floyd out of Minneapolis. We sometimes say, well, why do you have to protest in this manner? They tried peaceful protest. An African American took a knee on the playing field, a peaceful knee, and that was ignored or worse condemned. They marched across the bridge in Selma peacefully met with dogs and fire hoses and batons. The reality is that we have an embedded long history of racial strife that is 
part and parcel of the fabric of our country, the fabric of our lives. Whether we like it or not, whether we deny it or not, it is there. It exists. And we are called as Christians, as Episcopalians, to stand up against this type of injustice. We can no longer remain quiet and passive and just hope the storm passes. Because when the storm passes, there will still be a mess that needs to be cleaned up. There will still be people who need to be reconciled and healed from the damage. Now, not just to their bodies, but to their very hearts and souls. I was reading a friend of mine. He's went through my last seminary and up at Trinity Parish in Melrose. Nicest guy in the world, Michael Thompson. He's an African-American man. He's a habit educated lawyer. He came up to me and he said, I'm thinking about being ordained. And I said, really? Okay. I could see it in him. I knew he was going to be ordained. I could see it in the way he was, in the way he spoke, in the way he presented himself as a child of God. And I knew it for the first time we had a conversation. And at first he was thinking, I, have to, I think I'll just go and be a deacon because he was already working as a full-time lawyer. And I mean, he's, he can't go. I just can't see myself being a priest and working as a full-time lawyer. And then, he, then I started talking to him. I said, sure, make sure this is what you want to do. Sure enough, after he had, had more conversations with us, I pointed him toward the spiritual director. He finally came to me and said, yes, I think I want to be a priest. And so he is now in the in taking classes, online classes and off-site classes for seminary. And you will be ordained. Thanks be to God. We need his kind in our church. But he was saying out yesterday, he was going to Lowe's just to pick up some gardening tools, gardening stuff. And he passed four policemen. And he said, I would be lying to you if I didn't say I was just a little bit scared. An African-American man passing four police officers. Are they going to pull me over? He checked his speed. He made sure he talked, did all the right things. And they passed him along. This is a palpable fear that many have in our world, that some of us have never experienced at all. So what about Pentecost? This day upon which the Holy Spirit descends upon the apostles. And as they go out into the world and they speak the gospel message of love and of God's power, and everybody, everybody, no matter where they were from, no matter what country, heard it in their own language. How do we today live that kind of Pentecost spirit? Where what we say and what we do is heard by all, a message of God's love, of God's power, of God's healing grace in this world of pain, in this world of pandemic, in this world of mistrust at so many levels. It's not about a tweet or two. It's about what resides in our own hearts and our own soul. To come to grips with what we already believe, what we already carry with us. The Pentecost spirit today and every day asks us to live in a new way. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry wrote that our long-term commitment to racial justice and reconciliation is embedded in our identity as baptized followers of Jesus. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all people? Will you respect the dignity of every human being? As followers of Christ, as baptized members of this community, we say yes to each and every one of those. And we know we can't do it alone. We do it within the community of faith. We do it and we pray together. We do it and we gather together. We do it when we're outside of this building. If you notice, the Pentecost thing is great because the disciples were inside of a house, weren't they? They're sitting inside of a house and suddenly the Holy Spirit came in. A rush of wind. I can only imagine my own house that happening because all the stuff I got accumulated all over the place. Tongues of fire. It's then that they burst out of their homes and start proclaiming the gospel. It happened in and burst outward. They're filled with new wine, they all said. They gotta be drunk. They were filled with new wine. The new wine of the gospel message. And they may not have been drunk as the way we think of drunk, but they were drunk on the holiness that was spread by the gospel and by what the Spirit was doing in their lives. There is so much in our world that is hurting. So much we are called to seek and serve Christ today and every day. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody promised us a rose garden when we got baptized. That was not one of the things we got. We may have gotten a candle when we got baptized, but I'm sure most of those candles are now long gone. But what we carry each and every day in our lives is what's important for us and for all people. When we see injustice, we need to speak. When we see someone being hurt, we need to heal. Where there is strife, we seek to bring peace. It isn't easy. It's never going to be easy. It was never easy 100 years ago. It wasn't easy back in the 60s. It's not easy today. It's a road we must go walk along. It's a journey we all are called to take. How do we heal the wounds of this world? How are we to be the hands, the loving hands of Jesus Christ? And take this message of love and spread it out. Let's not hoard it. Let's not keep it to ourselves. Let's not be afraid. Let us instead speak the truth in love. Know that as Paul said today that we are one body and all, this, and all members of this one body. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, black, white, women, men, Asian, African American, whatever you want to call it. We were all, all made to drink of one spirit. If you ever get a chance today, you people out there in the Facebook world, or in your world anywhere, go on Facebook. Go to Tizay. There was a great video they put on Tizay today. Hundreds of young people from across the globe, everywhere, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, from states, from all over the place. And they were singing the Tizay channel. 
Veni Sancte Spiritus. Veni Sancte Spiritus. Veni Sancte Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come into our world. Come and make us new people. Come and bring us peace. Come, Holy Spirit, into our hearts, into our souls, and into our lives. Amen. Let's now say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us in Christ's salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form two. I ask your prayer for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, the most Reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop. and Reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop, and for Bruce Lomas, priest, John Lane, senior warden, vestry group, Brian, Acacia, Barbara, Monique, Ray, Ralph, and the diocesan cycle of prayer, the musicians in all of the parishes in the Episcopal Church in Delaware, for this gathering and for all ministers and people, Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace and goodwill among nations, for the well-being of all people. We pray for those in the military, Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Carroll. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for the following. Those with, who are sick and with other issues. John Macy, Joe Kowalski, Regina Miller, Bill Shaw, Emma Fisher, Linda Reed. John Dasani, Julia Wise, Catherine Russ, Paula Swift, Bernie Polker, Michelle McKay, Lexi Miles, Jimmy Walters, Roberta Mc McCampbell, Rich Froelich, Shirley Bowden, Shirley Hampton, and Renee Voss. For long-term and restored health, Dale Matlock, Barbara Mogul, for good health in older years, 
Brenton Focus, Molly Rebels, Mary Mills, and Joan Knob. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found in Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Irma Sherman. Pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgiving for the birthday of Karen Krauss and the baptism of Taka Kokini. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Be glad not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Peace. 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 I'll say it again now, the general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole world creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us in tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments that satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life, again, in which we were raised to life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort, and easy answers, hot truths, and superficial relationships that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice and oppression and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, war, and pandemic, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world. You can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and the poor. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.